So what you just saw me doing there is what we would call a zercher or a zercher position. Um, split squat with the front heel elevated. Basically what I'm working on there is the zercher position with the band is pulling your elbows forward. And what that is going to do is open up room for you to, to expand the back side of your rib cage. So if I pull my elbows forward, um, that's going to wrap my shoulder blades around my rib cage and give me some space to kind of fill up with air um, on the back side of my rib cage. That's also going to help kind of pull my pelvis back into a more posterior position. Um, all that's doing and why I'm doing that in a warm up is just to create a little bit more movement variability. So with strength sports and with the goal of lifting a lot of weight, you kind of fall into a strategy of um, pushing your rib cage forward and um, compressing the back side of your rib cage, your lower back, pelvis. So the back side of your body is typically more compressed and what that does is limit you um, range of motion wise in the shoulder, hip, um, sort of mostly everywhere because when you're trying to lift a lot of weight you want to decrease motion um, so you can lift heavy weight because you don't want to have the potential to move a lot under heavy loads so your body kind of develops this compressive strategy and with that not any harm in, in and of itself but with that you can start to lose and compromise range of motion long term. Well, that was interesting. 
Um, so I just kind of planned on just casually working up and kind of see where the day was going to take me. Um, weight felt light, weight actually technique and everything felt relatively good. Uh, missed 100, um, that's kind of garbage, then came back hit it. Missed 105, came back hit that, then hit 110, then hit 115. Um, heavier weights felt not as good, just general, generally all around felt all right today, maybe slightly better than average. Um, I just get a really bad habit of when I pass my knees, I like to drive my chest back behind the bar, that kind of swings my hips forward and I kind of, rather than directing all my force straight down and driving straight up with the bar, I kind of get a, just a little bit of a hip swing and that causes the, the bar to kind of just casually, subtly uh, loop out in front of me. It's not huge, but um, as you get to heavier weights, um, it, half an inch forward is, is going to make all the difference. So um, I just got to get better at, as I pass my knees, keeping my shoulders and chest on top and just staying over, staying over, staying over and driving straight up um, at the top and not wanting to drive my chest back. Um, that's a habit I've kind of um, ingrained for a long while. Um, I just got to um, break that habit and honestly it's already gotten better just in the three weeks I've been in weightlifting, but um, I mean, obviously still just got to hammer it home. Um, done with snatches, I'm going to hit some bodybuilding stuff and then that'll be it. Just finished up today. Um, overall, not a bad day. Actually worked up to 115 on snatch, which is actually two kilos under my all-time best. Um, did not expect that at all today, but kept making five kilo jumps, and the weight, again, didn't feel heavy. Um, just still working on some technique things, not getting behind the bar too much at the top. Um, but overall, not bad. Hit 115, um, was unexpected today. But again, the weight kind of felt light, so I kept making five kilo jumps. Um, I think the doing powerlifting the past year or so helped create a good solid foundation of strength for me. And that has helped a lot um, merging into this Olympic weightlifting program. So just to backtrack a little bit, um, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago now, I decided to stop powerlifting and transition uh, straight over to Olympic weightlifting. If, for those of you who don't know, uh, my senior year of college, I watched a podcast, Barbell Shrug, they had Kendrick Ferris on, and he's an Olympic, Olympic weightlifter who actually competed in two Olympics. The day after that, I went into the rec center at Ball State and just started teaching myself the Olympic lifts. I was awful. I was wearing crappy tennis shoes, and I was just kind of watching some online videos to help work on technique. So that's when I officially started Olympic weightlifting, and then I did that straight for about three and a half years. Then about the last year and a half, two years, I did nothing but powerlifting or just kind of slowly transferred over to powerlifting. And I honestly just recently kind of started getting a little bit bored with it, wanted to change some things up, and I'm around so many Olympic lifters here at Lift Lab that just watching everybody lift kind of gave me the, um, that itch to do Olympic weightlifting again. So here we are, I've been on a program for about three weeks now, just finished up week three. Um, again, to what I did today was actually not on the program, but wanted to come in and just do some stuff. So I've been doing four days a week of Olympic weightlifting, and after this week, I think I'm gonna go into five days. Just kind of wanted to start off um, something I could handle and then just slowly build up from there. 
Um, so far, so good. Like I said, just hit 115 today, which is a good sign. That's two kilos under my best. It's a good sign that things are progressing in the right direction. Also hit 140 on clean and jerk two days ago. I'll post that in this video. Um, that felt pretty good. Again, the strength is for sure there. Just got to dial some technique things in. And because of that solid foundation of strength that I've kind of built up over the years, um, I'm really excited to see where that um, leads me to in the future once I get some technique things dialed in. Um, the program I'm on right now, it's a lot, it's probably more Olympic lifting volume than I've ever done, but it is a lot of volume of time set. So it's a lot of doubles every 90 seconds, doubles every two minutes, um, singles every two minutes. So I'm doing like each day, I'm doing about 18 sets of um, actual working sets on the snatch or clean or clean and jerk. Um, I think this is a really good thing for me because in the past I've never done, I've never accumulated a lot of volume of Olympic lifts. It was a little bit of Olympic lifting, it was heavy Olympic lifting, and then just a bunch of kind of accessory stuff. And I think all this volume that I'm accumulating with the Olympic weightlifting movements, and again it's timed, so you can't go that heavy. So you're accumulating, you're building a lot of work capacity and working on accumulating a lot of load and a volume of the Olympic lifts. And so far, first week, my knees were kind of beat up, shoulder was beat up pretty bad just because I went from power lifting where you're not going overhead pretty much at all, right into Olympic lifting and the lifts are a lot more dynamic. So I was beat up a little bit that first week, but my body reacted to the volume pretty dang well. And I feel pretty damn good right now. Um, and like I said, accumulating all this volume I think is really good for me because I haven't done that much of this type of volume of purely the Olympic lifts in the past. So I'm very excited moving forward. Um, like I said, I already said, hit 115 on snatch, 140 on clean and jerk, six, that's six, six kilos under my clean and jerk PR. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. Um, it's the end of January right now, it's the 26th. I think I'm going to compete at a meet we're hosting here on the 10th. Um, the plan for that is to qualify for AO3, the American Open Series 3, for those of you who don't know, which is hosted in Vegas. So the plan is to compete here in February, qualify for Vegas, and then go to Vegas in, in September to compete there at the AO3 and have a good old time in Vegas. So that's the plan right now. I think that's all I want to tell you. Yeah, hold it. Let's go, baby!